Okie dokie. So anybody else with a specific idea? Awesome. A fighting game that you control with your head. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is that sufficient to remember? All right. We d I don't think we need any more details on that one. That seemed to be sufficiently exciting for folks. All right. There's another hand. Yes. These are really well scoped for two days. I'm, I'm quite impressed. All right, um, paint with body. And it would be, so the right hand is a different color or a different brush, and the left hand is a different color or a different brush or something like that. Okay. All right, yeah. Um, oh wait, sorry. We'll start back there and go forward. Puzzle box, and then one hand can be like rotating to the different sides of it, and your right hand can be like the interacting hand. Oh, funky, like a Rubik's cube type thing where you have yeah, to. Yeah, but like one hand is like how you move around, and the other one's like the interaction. All right. And then I had this some solid interaction right there. <laughs> um, all right, ninja. So two stage one is dodge throwing stars. Second is throw throwing stars. All right. Oh, yeah. What about a game where you have to uh, indirectly guide little abstract characters into different places? Like a square character into a square place, a triangle character into a triangle place, the circle character into a circle place. <laughs> but you do it indirectly. But you don't control the player. We have to find a means for you to kind of push people one way or the other. Uh -huh. They behave differently depending on their physics, the body physics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you so it, some indirect control. It's it's like a the like the, the like the uh, like, like lemmings. Lemmings or something like that. Where oh, it's I see. Like this I see. You have a, a some sort of either procedural or physics based behavior, mm -hmm. and you don't have a direct. Like you can just grab it and put it there. You have to find other ways. Maybe you. Maybe you, can you blow into the into the connect or um, something like maybe? I think the in? the microphone can detect noise levels, but I don't know if you could detect blowing versus just ambient noise. Yeah, that would be hard. So right. you have to okay. do your own code for that. You have to do something okay. that is indirect control. Right. Okay. And, and the end kind of mechanic would be to guide them home or something, like uh -huh. to guide them into some place. Into the right place. Okay. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, you play as Godzilla and you try to help the city, but it's very easy to destroy everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> like, I just want to help. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that really, I felt that one right in my heart. That was good. All right. <laughs> good to live. Alright, 
Any other fun specific? Oh yeah. Um, a racing game where if you link to the net and the Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. That's going to be a really good educational game to put together, like in order to learn all the mechanics of what's happening inside of the Connect. That's a really nice kind of learning project. Uh, right? Over there. Oh, over there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, I'm thinking of <laughs> I remember this thing. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking to build like a virtual aquarium. So, like, um, you, if you're like the scuba diver, you're, you, and you wave your arms, the, the fish get kind of get scared and they flock away from you and then they slowly kind of sneak back and then you move and they get scared again. Mm, okay. So, basically, it's kind of like rollerball, but you're, the, the cubes are. Um, there's a force around the player, mm -hmm. quote unquote, and the cubes. Um, right, they they like them. want to be in a certain configuration, but <laughs> until you scare them, yeah. they, they scatter. Right, right, right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So virtual. I like what you called a virtual aquarium. <coughs> Where. It's also a good one. You're going to learn about area effectors and triggers by doing that. Um, and any other? I thought I hit, saw a hand, but it was behind. No, it's just a person doing something. Um, oh, Glenn, do you want to make a pitch for your puzzle, 2D puzzle? This is. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm late. Oh, that's all right. I'm sorry to get you mid mid adjustment on. The <laughs> I had a computer malfunction this morning, so the laptop won't boot. Oh no. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm thinking about trying, what I've wanted to do for a long time is to uh, deploy 2D grid puzzles. So that what I mean by those are things like, you know, the game of Sotoban, or te Tetris is kind of a grid puzzle. So there's a whole range of these things that occur on discrete grids that have cells. So you might have like a 10 by 10 grid, a 5 by 5, a 2 by 15. But anyway, um, so there's a whole range of good puzzles. I've tried to design a bunch of new puzzles, and I would like to, you know, learn an infrastructure, software infrastructure that will let me quickly build ver versions of these puzzles and deploy them across platform. And so I'm hoping Unity might be something that would work that way. So, so what I'd like to do is. Uh, so are we doing mini projects? Or Mi mini mini projects, projects, yeah. Mini so projects that utilize the connect in some small way. Oh, like that way when you do your larger project, that? yeah, once you do your larger project, it doesn't have to. So it could be a grid puzzle game that you just move the object around. Right. So, sure enough. Um, right. so, so what I'm thinking as a first mini project is just to try to you know, learn how to put a grid on the screen, 2D grid, and have a single element that moves around the grid. So it would be sort of like rollerball except, rollerball, except that it would move discreetly from one cell to the next but, and not dynamically. If we wanted to get fancy, eventually we could try to do animation to move you know, the ball or the element from one cell to the next. But initially, I just had to reposition and jump to a quantum jump. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so the first pass is just to be able to control, you know, have a grid, represent the grid, control the ball, move it around. So that's simple, but simple things sometimes take a long time to put into software. If we get beyond the first stage of that, then yeah, there's a, I, I've implemented a simple game in the past just as an exercise, which is a, what I call target, where you, you move the ball to a target cell, and as soon as you hit the target, as soon as you get it onto the cell that has the target, the target will jump somewhere else, and then you move, you move again to try to get to that target. So again, it's a pretty trivial thing. Right. I made a website that did that. It had a button, and every time you clicked it, it didn't do the thing it said, it just moved. And so, <laughs> yeah, move the button. It just moved itself. So it was like, submit, sub submit. Right. <laughs> so, and then there's variations of that, but you know, it's not hard to get from that to a puzzle that's pretty challenging. 
So you put in obstacles on the grid so that you know, certain cells can get pass through. You can make a maze, for example. You have to get through the maze to get to the target. Um, I developed a, a version of this that I call multi-target, where you have you know, like two or three things that move, and then when you control them, they all move, try to move in the same direction, unless one of them's hitting an obstacle or something. Any of the hit obstacles wouldn't move. So. So you can use the obstacles cleverly to sort of change the relative positions of the moving objects. And, and the, object, the, the game objective is to get all the moving objects onto targets simultaneously. So there might be three target cells or three movables, and you try to get all three simultaneously onto the targets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Things along those lines. Cool. Yeah. Any other specific mini projects? Just your base things. Oh yeah, awesome. Uh, Oops, sorry, what? Um, where like you're in a situation where you're like kind of angry at everyone. People are trying to come towards you and trying to help you. But like you just do like every single time you <laughs> like hand motions and then they just like fly away. <laughs> 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 just, just like leave me alone. Yeah, like, they'll be like, you know how, like, they're trying to do, like, magic wand games or something, I don't know. <laughs> like, there's, like, a design that you have to make with your, like, either your, your cursor, but it's things you do with your hand. Yeah, a little gesture. Like, right, right, right. If you do it wrong or not in the amount of time, then... They, like, like hug you. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Need, I want to make a comedic joke about it, but I I'm too uncomfortable, so I'm not going to. I'm just gonna. <laughs> um, no, I, I think it is very funny, and I think a lot of people will identify very very much with it. Um, I I don't know how to describe that. The getaway game, the the loner's dilemma. The dilemma. <laughs> um, shoe. Shoe. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Um, push away. All right, I'm gonna call it push away affection, although that may be too too strong of a title for it. But <laughs> right, it is it is good. So there is um, there's some implicit stuff that has happened here, which is some of you are starting to think about the mechanic, the interaction mechanic. So you're thinking about the connect in a kind of a nice way, which is you can map some type of movement onto an interaction with the game. So you can think a really simple mechanic, which is like grab, move, it's exactly like a mouse. And everything is perfectly fine, and my mind knows how to do that because I use mice all day. But with the connect, you can do these things like this means like get away from me, whereas this means like, all right, come in for a hug. And you can start thinking about very different interaction mechanics. Um, and it was something similar here where just any type of wiggle is like, a, you know, scare the fish, which is not something you normally think about when you're thinking of building a video game. But when you have the connect, you can actually think about these new interaction uh, models. Um, does the connect distinguish between open and closed fists, for example? It does with 70% accuracy <coughs> most of the time. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so there was, are you guys saving the, um, there was like a making a tree grow game. Is that, are you saving that for the large project? Is that, yeah, all right, sorry, never mind, never mind. Forget that I said that. <laughs> All right, any other fun things with different, yeah? Yeah, so a uh, platform puzzle where you have to navigate the ball from start to end without falling off. But instead of controlling the ball, you are going to push the ball. Mm -hmm. Like using force. Yeah. Um, yes, so platform. So you're like the god of wind, and you can yes. like push a gust, and it, it rolls a little bit in that direction. You have to redirect it. Okay. 
Awesome. So it's pretty good. We have space for one, two, three, four, five more. And they don't have to happen. So if you have ideas and they don't happen, no problem. I think I'll just share the tree one. <clears throat> so it's right. actually taken from the cartoon Totoro from Studio Ghibli. In the middle of the movie, there's um, Totoro who like grows this tree. So he brings every, like all his friends, like the two girls, and they bow like the Asian, like when you're praying, you bow. And then as you bow, this the, the seeds grow into like little leaves and it grows into like a small tree and it grows into a huge tree. So it's sort of like um, another form of the storytelling. Like the little girls, like your life is gonna, you're growing up. You're gonna be in a different state of your life soon. So, so maybe this thing could be, as you're doing, like what you referenced with the, with the aquarium too, like when you're making a little gesture, like mm -hmm. something grows. <coughs> Mm -hmm. So anytime you're like hands are together and near and near your head or something yeah. like that, nice. Like Totoro. Like Totoro. <laughs> Am I, did I spell it right? I just am guessing by. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. So this is a really good gesture that can be easily defined, which is hands come near each other, they come near the head a certain distance, and then all three drop down. So you're going to have to have somebody on your team who can like program to recognize the gesture, but you have support and we can help you get that. Uh, but yeah, I like this tree growing one. And you could, to start in the next two days, you could just have gesture recognized and then have something grow. And that's kind of like the extent of what you do in two days. It just keeps growing or as long as you're holding it, it grows or um, and that's a really well scoped kind of four hour thing to try to do with a team. Yeah. This is kind of similar to the paint one, um, but what if it was like terraforming? <laughs> the second form of interaction would be like water. So then you can see how, like, which way water would pass through whatever like land you create. Nice. Um, terraforming new. if I'll use that space, but I left it there. Um, I'm gonna throw an out, which would, oh no, that would be, never mind. I'm not gonna say that, it'd be way too complicated. Nope, forget that. My, my brain is usually too confused to. How good is resolving the position of the board? If you jump like, from one point to another, and you have to jump like, like if you jump like that? Can you resolve that? You can see your feet very well. So long as you point it down, though. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe that you can just make this kind of Super Mario a collapsible bridge thing, but like you have to cross a bridge uh, in a certain amount, like within a limited time. Because uh, mm -hmm. each block, once you touch it, it would just fall down and you just have to. I see. So, so it's kind of like scrolling at you and you have to like yeah, jump so across the bridge. You have to run fast and also precisely on that block, otherwise you miss it. Mm -hmm. That would be something that's very doable. It's very doable. All right. Um, I don't know why I wrote the word adventure, but I did. Uh, I'm going to draw a little foot, a little person's foot. That's a person, and here's. I don't know if that's something like that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Two, two more. It's for my OCD. I don't want to leave part of the board left <laughs> uncovered. <laughs> it's not necessary, but it would make me so happy inside. Um, what, what's other cool things that people do? Food or oh yeah, very right, good. How about like keeping bowling, but there's also 
obstacles in your way as well. And so once you like release the ball, you can also like try to change the direction of the ball by like oh. you know, <laughs> So the actual bowling that we do, where we're like, yeah, come on, lead to the right. <laughs> that's that's really good. That's. Um, you're capturing a very intuitive interaction there, which is you roll it and you go, come on. Um, okay, so we're gonna call it real bowling. <laughs> Jedi bowling. Jedi bowling, nice. <laughs> Jedi bowling. And then you can have like little mice run out across because you're at like a, a turn and you're like, no, no, don't hit the mouse, no. <laughs> All right, and then there was another hand. Yeah. Um, maybe if you had like a, a ball with like little magnet balls, and I'm not sure if it can be like accurate enough, but to be able to just kind of like play with like a virtual ball of magnets. Oh, man, if you for the if, if I would love if somebody tried that for the mini project, and then if it went fairly well, did that for the main project. And then I could tell a really good story about how this class led to the thing that we built this class for, which was to do something that's kind of an interactive science e demo. And yeah, and would also feed into our pitch to make a VR cave inside of the university. So there's, you, you nailed it. You were holding that one for last and I appreciate it. <laughs> So it'll be something, so it doesn't do so well on like fingers, but it'll be something where you can like move, like it'd be like as if you're in a ball pit, but the balls are all kind of <laughs> like magnetic and you can like move them with your body. But, and, and maybe somewhat very related to the fish thing. So just a different physics that's, gener that's governing the kind of flocking of these objects that are around your body. Um, okay, cool. Anybody feel like they had one in and they were too shy to say it, but now they feel like they should? Because you can. Nope. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, this may be a little advanced for a remedy project, but uh, I'm thinking of like 3D rotations of uh, multi cell pieces, like Tetris, 3D Tetris type pieces that could be, I assume you can make pieces in Unity that are like gluing together cubes or something. Mm -hmm. And so they all move together. And so the idea would be to just come up with reasonable connect, connect gestures that would rotate in 3D. <coughs> and so the game, you know, the mini game could be, you know, you could be you've got a piece that you have to you know, match to a, a target orientation. So maybe a little display shows the orientation you're aiming for, and you just have to rotate the piece to get it. That, mm. hey, that is good. And there was another. One over here, which would have a similar um, bottom left puzzle box. Puzzle box, yes. Right, so this one was something like you have a box and you move it and you can rotate it in some meaningful way. And then this one allows you to do some interaction. So maybe you're like painting the sides of a, of a ceramic vase or something. Um, but yeah, so these two would have very similar mechanics. All right, so the next thing is you're all going to stand up and uh, how do we, is this gonna work with this many people? Yeah, we're gonna explore. Um, so you're gonna stand up and you're gonna come up here and make a vote for the ones, oh, do you want a picture of that? Yeah, feel free. Let me get out of the way. <laughs> I think there's about 10,000 sales there. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so come up and do a vote. So if you are interested in doing it, come, oh, sorry, you want, that was in your way again. Um, come up and just put a check box, a little check mark, which is like, I'm interested in this thing and this is gonna help us self-organize in some way. Um, and we can narrow this down to how many people are in this room? Three, six, nine, twelve, maybe thirty-five, and 
Yeah, so getting this down to like eight to nine projects. So you're going to want to be in a team of three, but I don't want you instantly to go like, I already kind of know somebody, so I'm going to be in their team no matter what. Um, try on the mini project, and then I won't make you do it on the big project, to go based on your interest and maybe collaborate with people that you have never talked to. And, and it'll only be two days, so it's at worst going to be two days where you get to sit and play with Unity and not talk to people that you don't want to talk to. Um, and so this is the time to do that experiment, and you might make a new friend. Who knows? Um, yeah, so either, OK, you can either come up and do the checkbox thing or like find some way to self-organize around which project you want to do. And I know that this will be chaos for like 15 to 20 minutes. And then once you organize around a project that you want to do, um, start, well, no, no, for 15 or 20 minutes, try to figure out who you want to work with on which project. And then um, we'll come together and you'll start to refine it. It doesn't have to be the exact vision of the person who wrote it on the board, but there's something about one of these projects that interests you. Maybe it's you want to know how to do the, you know, hand, hand rotation or arm rotation type thing. Maybe it's that you want to understand how just to detect this thing and do flocking algorithms so objects will move in a certain way. Um, so figure out something about one of these that interests you. Go find the other people who are interested in it by some method and talk to them and see if it seems like a good fit or if they have because you may come up and somebody's like i love fish and somebody else like i want to detect motion like this and you decide not to work together because one of you really just wants to build fish and the other one just wants to do body motion um and it, yeah so that's try to do something i like this chaos should we do the name game again or like do something to make us more extroverted or are we feeling confident on okay on the count of three you say a number between zero and ten which represents how introverted and shy you feel right now so i'm sorry what ten being like i am so ready to oh yeah right you're right that would be an inverse all right so ten Ten means I'm, I'm just going to stand up and go hug a stranger right now. And zero being I am I am just so terrified to stand up and talk to somebody right now. Uh, not even the people I know do I want to talk to. So, yes. So ten being super extroverted. Zero being super introverted. One, two, three, seven. All right, so five to four. All right, we're going to try to get that to a seven. And then we're going to have you get up and talk to strangers. Um, so how about we close our computers now, and I'm going to do a, I'm going to wa walk you guys through and then do a big circle around the room, and we're going to do an improv game to make ourselves feel a little more extroverted. And it'll be super fun, I promise. So close your computers, move the tables to the center of the room, make a big circle around the room.